Well, hello there! I hope you're having an amazing day and that you're ready to set up your working environment for Rust. Well, alrighty then, let's get started from the term IDE, which means Integrated Development Environment. We are going to explain what it actually means because it's a very common term in programming. It represents a piece of software or an app that we use to write our code effectively. It's as simple as that. So, for working with Rust, we have quite a few IDE options. But the one that I like and I feel that so many people besides me also enjoy is Visual Studio Code. That is exactly why we are going to start things off by downloading Visual Studio Code and installing it. And after we are done with that, we are going to further extend it with some extensions. So, let's jump right into installation guide. Well, alrighty then, we are going to start things off by searching for Visual Studio Code in Google. Of course, I'm going to attach the link in the video description. When you have googled it, you can click on the first result you see. And when you have done that, you can see a big blue download button, which is basically automatic download. You do not have to think about the operating system or architecture or whatever. You just click it and the website is going to figure out for you what would be the best installer for you. But on the other hand, if you wish to have a bit more control, you can click the download tab here. And when you have done that, you will get a bit more options while downloading Visual Studio Code. The first thing you will need to do is to figure out which operating system do you use and I mean, for which operating system do you want to download Visual Studio Code for? And after you have figured that out, you need to select the computer's architecture. You need to worry about that basically only for Windows operating systems. Okay, but how can you do that actually? Because maybe not everybody knows how to check their architecture. Do not worry about it. I'm going to show you how you can check it yourself. So how do we actually figure out which architecture does our PC use? And to do that, you just start up File Explorer and then right click this PC icon and click Properties. And then you will see the system's architecture right here. When you see that, you're good to go. You will see whether 64 or 86. When you see that, you'll know which architecture your computer uses. And that's the one that you need to download for your Visual Studio Code. Well, alrighty then, now that we know the architecture of our PC, it's time to actually download it. And when it comes to downloading, we have a few options. Again, of course, a few options. And it doesn't matter which one you're going to download because every single type of installers is going to work perfectly fine for you. And uh, yeah, I'll not cover the pure installation process of Visual Studio Code because I feel like it's very straightforward. But on the other hand, of course, do not worry if you do not get it on your own. You can always ask me for help in the comments down below. So yeah, I'm at your disposal. Our Visual Studio Code is installed and ready to go. So right now we just need to install some extensions and make it even more pleasant to work with. So right now we need to answer the question, why actually install those extensions? Because it's a lot of work. If you think about it. I mean, it's not that much work, but it will take some time to install them and figure out which ones you like and which ones you do not. So yeah, we'll discuss why actually it is very beneficial to do it. The first reason is speed. You will be able to write code so much faster if you have extensions installed, because you will not have to remember all the methods and arguments that you will need when using and writing Rust code. So Making it possible for you not to remember it and get auto-suggestions is going to make your life so much easier and your coding experience so much faster. Besides that, some extensions will make sure that you do not have typos. Because in coders life, typos are a very common problem and a very annoying one indeed. So removing them is definitely going to be a significant improvement of life change. 
And finally, some extensions are going to allow us to debug our code and find potential mistakes and problems that exist in it. That is not all. We are going to talk about six different Rust extensions that I feel are very good options. And while talking about them, we'll discuss which ones of those are mandatory and you have to use them if you want to make your life comfortable, but others, on the other hand, are optional and you can decide for yourself if you find them more beneficial than like just annoying. So let's get started with talking about each of those extensions and how to install them. The first category of extensions are going to be core extensions. So as you probably have guessed it, these ones are basically mandatory. They are going to provide so much value and are going to be so beneficial for your coding experience that I think you should not consider them. I think you should just go ahead and install them immediately. So the first one is going to be Rust Analyzer. It's probably the most important extension you are going to install. It is going to allow you to have syntax highlighting. It's going to allow you to have go to implementation functionality. So you can just hold your control key and get right into definition of some method or a struct or whatever, but you're going to see it in practice later on. Do not worry about it. But the most important part here, it's really beneficial for you. So let's talk about how you can install it and use that same approach for installing all other extensions in future. Let's get right into it. Great, let's get into Visual Studio Code and discuss how you can install an actual extension for it. The first one we are going to install is going to be Rust Analyzer. So you do not want to install the first one, I'm talking about this one, but you want to install Rust Analyzer because the first one is deprecated and is no longer being supported and used. So Rust Analyzer is the one you want. After you have selected it, you just click install. And that's it. You have installed your first Visual Studio extension. It's as simple as that. The second core extension we want to include is code LLDB. This one is used for debugging our code. And living without any ways to test our code in runtime is basically impossible when you work on any even slightly serious project. So you definitely want to have some way to test your code. So that is why I really recommend you to install code LLDB extension. The second category of extensions are going to be package related ones. So these extensions are going to make our lives much easier when working with crates and other package related stuff. You still probably do not know what am I talking about, but I will show you in practice very soon. So do not worry about it. You'll figure it all out when we get to it in our coding lessons. The first extension from package category is going to be better TAML. TAML is a format that we use inside of our cargo TAML file, which is one of the base files of our project. You will see it's, it's generated for us automatically as soon as we create a new project. And better TAML is going to enable highlighting inside of it. And that is going to make our lives much easier while working with it. And the second extension is called crates. And this one allows us to know which versions exist for our dependencies and which ones are recommended, stable, nightly, and stuff like that. So you do not have to worry about all that stuff. You will see it in practice again, do not worry about it, but it's very beneficial for you because in Rust, you have to think about versions of crates that you use basically. So installing crates extension is going to make your life a lot easier. And the final category of extensions are going to be additional optional ones. So we have two here as well. The first one is called error lens. And this one allows you to see error messages without actually compiling your code. So you will see inline error messages or warnings for any location in your code that possesses any potential problems. So this one for me personally 
is a bit too overwhelming at times because when you have a bit more complex code, the messages can get really cluttered and it kind of becomes hard to follow them along. But I feel like in the beginning, while we are learning, it's going to be a nice addition to our Visual Studio code because it will point our attention towards potential problems. That is why I feel like it's a very good option, but I think also that you should consider it yourself if you feel like it's more beneficial or not for you. And the last extension we have for today is called Tab9. And what it does is allows us to have artificial intelligence powered autocomplete in our Visual Studio code. So basically, it will give you suggestions for completing your functions or whatever pieces of code you're writing based on previous experiences while basically monitor you while writing your code. So it's a very smart tool and it can be really beneficial at times. So I think you should definitely give it a go and see for yourself if you enjoy its benefits more than you do, do not. So it's as simple as that. You can pick for yourself if you want to install it or not. Great job there! I'm so proud of you! We went through the installation process for our Visual Studio code and we also installed all of the potentially beneficial extensions for it so our coding experience would be as pleasant as possible. So right now I would like to end this video and in the next video I'm going to show you in practice what all of these extensions are going to provide for us. So we're going to go through all the benefits that these extensions are going to give us and make our lives a lot easier. So now there is only one thing left and that is to wish you an amazing day. Goodbye.